So uh, thank you, uh, Dirk. Um, yeah, and thank you everyone for being in this session. Uh, I will present a short overview of our project that was funded under uh, VOTO GCP1. And uh, then uh, I will just, so I will give an overview and then Justin will focus on the nutritional aspects uh, in our project. Our project was also performed by uh, Bernard Monga, who is in the audience here, Sydney Peary who is also in the audience, and Sydney will actually present some follow-up plans later on this afternoon, so please all watch him and uh, consider voting. And then Anita Linneman uh, was involved, and also more distantly, Rob Naut and Joseph Unuega. So it's very nice to see you all here. So um, our project was on locally produced fermented foods in Zambia. So on our next slide, you'll see, uh, well, what, our, uh, what the main gist of our project was. Uh, so first of all, what are fermented foods or traditional fermented foods? So fermented foods rely on the transformation of raw materials by microbes to fresh, safe or to, to safe foods. So we all know yogurt and maybe beer and wine and so on. These are examples. But actually in many countries, many local traditional fermented foods exist. And these all rely on like a low cost technology. And uh, common features that they share is that uh, there's an increased nutritional and commercial value if you compare the fermented food to the raw material. So there is this, this really an added value of, of, of doing this transformation. <clears throat> Many of these products are culturally embedded, meaning they are part of local culture and they have uh, uh, usually a very high consumer acceptance. And these products have also created many opportunities for entrepreneurship and livelihoods. However, we have argued and we're hoping to uh, be uh, part of a solution here. Uh, but well, I, th I think we can say that traditional fermented foods have been underutilized in, in the promotion of uh, food and nutrition security. And so what we could say is that uh, fermentation is, is, a, is a way of processing and value addition that links primary production to like, yeah, uh, more impact, uh, nutrition and livelihoods. <clears throat> and so uh, what we have done is for this Votro project, we've mainly worked in Zambia. And uh, you can see on the next slide, some photos and also a list. Um, we have worked on two fermented foods, uh, one uh, based on milk and one based on cereal. And these were widely produced may mainly in rural areas and all age group consume this product. It's a non-alcoholic product. They all rely on uncontrolled fermentation. And we have been able to show that uh, they are nutritious and also safe foods. And you see a few pictures here on the top right, you see Mabisi, which is a milk product. It's sold like this on markets. And you see a lady with a calabash on her lap. That is how we can make uh, Munkoyo. And also in the middle, you see people selling along the roadside. And then down you see a, a container. So it's also now being made more large scale at mill collection centers. And during our project, we also got inspired to look to other countries. So on the right, you see two pictures from Benin actually, where people are also making uh, a traditional fermented food, but are trying to sell it slightly more formally. So out of our project, we, have came, we came up with sort of a framework on how to further progress with these fermented foods. And that's what you can see here. So fermented foods can really be used to promote food and nutrition security. And there are various aspects that are all interconnected that need to be addressed. So um, we could start at the top, you could start anywhere in this circle, but consumers are important. What do they want? What would they buy? What would they be interested in? So also thinking of these traditional foods. What processing is required so that we can uh, upscale but also make processing such that consumers get the products that they like. So then processing links to product functionality, which has a lot to do with the microbes that underlie fermentation. What are they doing? And what do we need? And then that links to nutrition and health. And Justin will tell you much more about that. But in short, these bacteria have an effect on health. They can be good for your gut. And then that links to entrepreneur, entrepreneurial context. So what is these, these processes? Could they sort of use all this to, to promote their foods and then build value chains so that they can reach those consumers? So this is a new, well, this is a sort of an idea that emerged out of our Voto project and that we are now following up in Zambia, but also now in Zimbabwe and in Benin. 
So this is where I will end and I will pass it over to Justin now who will speak to you a bit more about the nutritional aspects. Uh, thank you very much, Simon, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, looking at um, that uh, framework, we take over from um, uh, where we can see the problem of malnutrition and poverty. Uh, so I hope uh, you can see my arrow here. This is the country Zambia. Where yes, we I'm can see your arrow moving. Where we are working from. And then uh, this, if you look at the colors of the countries, you can see uh, that this d brown color, which is um, uh, indicates the percentage of uh, the population undernourished. And, and in the country Zambia, we have um, a more than 35% of uh, individuals who are undernourished. And uh, that inspired our program, uh, our, our project, uh, in order to be part of a solution uh, that can um, uh, uh, look at uh, food diversity and come up with uh, ways of improving the nutrition uh, by way of improving the, uh, the local foods. Um, Yeah, so when we look at um, uh, these foods, we can um, look at it from different ways. One of them is that um, it impacts its impact of local of, of on nutrition. So the, the, there is potential impact, which is uh, largely unknown. And uh, with this, we wanted to look at uh, three questions, which focused on uh, what nutrients are present and secondly, raw in diets. And uh, thirdly, what is the impact on health? Uh, therefore, well, the first one, um, uh, the first question co uh, focused on uh, the nutritional composition. So we really wanted to look at um, what are the nutrients uh, that are in Mabisi and uh, in, um, in, in, in Munkoyo. So Mabisi, which is a, a milk breeze fermented, a fermented food, had a higher nutrient value than, um, than Munkoyo. And uh, that Mabisi contributed higher percentage of nutrients than Munkoyo towards the estimated average requirement, which is an average uh, estimate of uh, the, the, the level of nutrients that are required in, in the human body. So in the table, you can see the, uh, the percentage contribution or, uh, to, S, uh, to EAR, which is the estimated average requirement. Uh, on the left, we have uh, the products, which is coil based on cereal. And uh, the bottom one is uh, Mabisi. And, and the, the numbers are the percentage uh, of uh, estimated average uh, requirement. So we focused on crude protein, the vitamin Bs, and then uh, the mineral uh, micronutrients, calcium, iron, and uh, zinc. So we can see that um, Mabisi had uh, a higher percentage uh, uh, for uh, all the, the nutrients that we focused on, uh, 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 making it a more, a, a more nutritious uh, product. And, and that uh, it contributes much higher to, to, to the nutrient uh, uh, intake. The second one was uh, to look at the impact of these products on diet. So uh, firstly, we, 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 we looked at um, a linear programming to, 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 to look at uh, the computer-based programming and uh, uh, getting the information and input in the computer to look at the impact of uh, these, uh, these products on the diets of individuals. So with this, we looked at um, the, the, the information that we, 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 we collected from children under five. So here we have uh, the children between the ages of one to three as one group, and uh, the, the children between four and five as another group 
we separated them because the requirements in the two um, in the two age groups are a bit different. So when we um, did linear programming and added uh, Mavisi to the uh, local foods that uh, children were consuming, that is uh, the fr from the food consumption data, that is uh, through uh, questioning the parents of the children, what are the, the, the usual foods that uh, children consumed in the past 24 hours and, and uh, in the past one month, so that we could uh, estimate the, the average intakes. And uh, what we see in the graphs uh, that, um, is that uh, the, the, the first um, a, a graph shows the one to three year age group, as I said, and we have the bars which uh, represents the first one, the worst case scenario, and then the, the, the food-based recommendations based on the local foods, and then food-based uh, recommendations uh, plus uh, Munkoyo added, and then food-based recommendations plus Mabisi added. So what you can see is that um, there, there's an arbitrary cutoff point uh, of 70% of uh, RINI, the, 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 the nutrient intake, uh, the requirement, uh, the required nutrient intake uh, of 70%. Uh, percent. So we see that Mabisi always, um, was always high, higher than the rest. And uh, Munkoyo was uh, also the, uh, in most cases was the second. So this, um, even uh, the, the, the four to five year age group, you see that um, uh, the, the Mabisi had uh, a higher impact on, uh, on, um, on, uh, on the current diets. So in conclusion, we say, we can safely say that adding Mabisi uh, to the current diets really helps in, in, in nutrient intake. Of course, this uh, with this we, we require uh, other uh, programs to come in in terms of new, the nutrient index, looking at other sources of foods. And the, the third one, we looked at the, these local fermented foods in, uh, in terms of promotion of health. And uh, with this, uh, we looked at the complex uh, microbial community that is in foods uh, based on uh, the, 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 uh, the fermented foods. And then we looked at uh, alternation of gut microbial comp composition. That is what is the impact of these uh, microbes in the fermented foods on the gut microbial composition. And then we looked at uh, the exposure that leads to more um, healthy metabolism. So we, we can see that the gut uh, here, uh, we, we, which uh, we, we see the gut microbiota. Uh, basically what we, we looked at in this uh, was that um, it was based on two things. We looked at it from the, 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 um, the, the laboratory experiment as well as the field experiment where we collected two samples from the children under five, analyzed it, and then uh, looked at their uh, consumption of these uh, fermented foods. And um, what we, we saw was that um, in terms of uh, the gut microbial composition, uh, we, we, we just based on, uh, on, on a few that are known to, to have an impact. And, and, and uh, we, we, we saw that uh, this exposure led to more health metabolism. And also we looked at the, the, the nutritional status in terms of anthropometric measures. Those who had um, a higher consumption of uh, fermented foods had um, a, a, a good nutritional status than uh, the, the ones that are non-consumers. And then uh, we also looked at uh, the, the, the same project, uh, looking at um, the, the, the diarrhea episodes. We found that those who were um, consumers of these uh, products had very less uh, number of episodes at all they had than those who are non-consumers. And then uh, we, we, we
now Justin has shut himself off. And uh, I don't know. Yes, please. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I pressed. <laughs> uh, I think so you can start got, with this slide. From... Okay, you, I start from this one. Now you can go to the next one. To the next and that's one. pretty okay. much pretty much the last one actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we're looking at the strategy for impact, uh, the one Simon uh, presented. We, we looked at uh, the whole project in terms of the primary production of these fermented foods. That is um, uh, the processing that adds uh, value to these foods by uh, the act of microbes as uh, most of these, um, um, uh, some microbes uh, enhance the B vitamin uh, uh, levels. And, and uh, also once they, they work on these products, uh, as, as some, the, 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 the production process also reduces the phytate levels, which makes um, the, 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 the mineral micronutrients more bioavailable. And uh, this leads to the nutrition enhancement and also livelihood in terms of the women produce these, uh, these uh, foods in terms of um, uh, uh, having an income from these uh, fermented foods. Um, uh, the last uh, uh, slide, I just want to acknowledge um, the Wageningen University as the lead um, institution uh, in, in this project and uh, the University of Zambia and the TDRS, which is Tropical Diseases uh, Research Center, Haifa International, uh, Yoba for Life and CSK who came in uh, to support the project and the funding which came from uh, NWO and uh, Nutrition Foundation as, um, uh, as the main funders of the project. And on the right, as Simon uh, mentioned from the beginning, we have uh, him who was coordinating this whole project, and then Anita, Eddie, Elise, uh, Bass, and Yos, uh, John Chindano, uh, as as the, the supervisors for 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 this this project. And Just had uh, individuals Justin. such as uh, Nachimu Kachepa, John Do, Ray Wilco, Remco, Mariela as the people who give uh, um, uh, more support in terms of uh, a, 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 a adding value to, to, to the uh, supervision team. And the last names, myself, Bernard, Sydney, and Analus, we are the PhD students on, on this uh, project. Thank you very much. Uh, 